very much. So I'm Simon Pollard, mental health campaigner, looking to promote the countryside as the best resource we have for positive mental mind health choices. In September, I'm walking the Pennine Way, all 268 miles of it, to raise, well, to be honest, in the first place, because I actually want to, but in the second case, to raise awareness and funds for the work in mental health. Half of what we do is going to go to the Baton of Hope, which is probably the UK's leading suicide prevention charity. The other half will go to my organisation, Slow the Mind CIC. The real why, the real why. I always knew as a kid that the countryside was the best place to sort out dilemma, to sort out problems. I'd go there until either I'd sorted out what the problem was or I knew I had to be home for dinner and didn't want to get into trouble with mum. As a teenager, I'm managing chronic anxiety, but I don't know it because there wasn't the resources, there wasn't the information available. Even though I grew up in a loving household, we didn't have those conversations. So as a teenager, you discover alcohol and you discover drugs and they numb the pain. And then you start functioning. You start going out, you start doing things. But that alcohol is that crutch. For 35 years-ish, I don't remember a great deal because I wasn't very sober for most of it. So I want to change that. I only sorted that out because of one or two crux pivotal moments. And I can tell you when they are, the 5th of November, 2015. I was at an event, absolutely hammered. I got pulled up for a couple of minor criticisms and I totally lost the plot. I knew on that day I needed to stop drinking, but I wasn't ready for that decision. Fast forward to November 2021, I think. I walked the South Downs Way with my son. I was talking to him and I said, why is it, why is it, mate, that when we've done a whole long day's hike and we're ready, we go to the pub, you'll only have one beer. He said, Dad, I never know what you're going to do when you've been drinking. I have to stay sober enough to look after you. Bang! That one hits home. That one hits home. Then we moved on to, that must have been earlier than that because on the 3rd of February 2019, my granddaughter was born. The night before, I'd been drinking. I was hammered. And I'd made a prat of myself as usual. We got a call at 5 o'clock on a Sunday morning. Ivy's been born. We managed to get to the hospital. And I sat there with her in my arms. And on that day, I said, I'm not doing this anymore. And I stopped. And do you know what? Having made that decision, it was easy. When you want to stop drinking or anything else, I guess, it's easy. It took me five years between wanting to and actually making that decision or knowing I should. But I did. I did a 30 day, 90 day challenge. Not because I needed to, the deal was done but it shut everybody else up because nobody likes anyone stopping drinking. They want to get drunk with them. They want to laugh about the chaos. And do you know what? When I stopped drinking, the demons I was drinking to avoid weren't there anymore. That was pretty awesome, but it wasn't. Then, that I knew what I was dealing with, or I had been dealing with, I run outdoor events, and I'm sitting down listening to the people coming on those events and what they're saying. And I'm sitting there going, Shh, that's me. That's me, that's me. And I realized what I was managing was anxiety. So I've now educated myself to make better choices. But at the end of that event, a gentleman reminded me. He said, you just give me the first four hours of peace I can remember in ages. He left his phone in his pocket. And the other gentleman who was there realized he was living life on autopilot. He wasn't actually awake for most of the time. So those moments, just pointed out to me we've got to get the word out there we've got to help people make better decisions and what better way than to promote the countryside as our best resource for mental health than to get out there for 28 days in September with a tent a sleeping bag and a rucksack and actually walk the walk as well as talk the talk so I'm asking for help any way that you can help me spread the word is fantastic. 
If you have a deep pocket, I'm quite boldly going to say, I can help you empty it. It would be fantastic for me to be able to say, do you know what, we went and spoke to the Kent Chamber and they managed to put this amount of money together. I've got these cards with Q codes on them. They've got the GoFundMe link on them. Or you'll find them all over social media because I'm everywhere at the minute if you look for me. But thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much, for Victoria. Again, saying, yes, you can talk to the Chamber. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we're very happy to hear as well. So thank you very much always, indeed. Always. Brilliant. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.